<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, and guess what? It's Monday. Got some horror news for you. I got Jack these sleeves up right here. Alrighty, so let's see what we got. This isn't even like horror news. This is just scary fucking news. Uh, let's take a break from movies, shall we? Let's go to real life. Apparently, there was a woman in uh, North Carolina. West Virginia? North Carolina? Yeah, North Carolina. Uh, apparently, a guy dressed up as a clown was terrorizing her. Fucking, like, you know, 3.30 in the morning, showing up, hanging outside the window. It's just fucking with her. Uh, long story short, I think it may just be a prank because I guess she recognized, like, she knew who it was. Or, you know, after a while, she found out who it was or whatever. But I was like, what the fuck? Like, that, to me, would just, I, I'd shit myself. Like, literally just shit myself. Like, I'm not playing the game. At all. As soon as I looked at people and there's a clown, I'm like, nope, get on to bed. Get in the gun, get in the ball bat, whatever, just go on to bed. Just go on, get on the way and hope they go away. Because usually if you, like, encourage it, that's when they, you know. But I was like, holy shit, like, I, I, I thought that was crazy. Like, literally thought it was crazy. North Carolina. Isn't that uh, Ghostface Kids territory? Where are you at, Ghostface Kids? What else? I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not saying you did. Maybe you would, I don't know. But... <laughs> I'm going to feel bad now if the people are looking at him. Um, and then up next we got a... Apparently there's going to be a movie called In the In the Deep. Which, um, I, I don't know. In the, into the whatever movie. It just reminds me of Into the Blue. The Paul Walker just got out of a horrible fucking movie. So I was already kind of discounting this. But apparently, uh, and it doesn't sound like a bad movie. A woman stuck on a buoy. Just out in the middle of the ocean. And there's a fucking shark. Just boom. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm down for that kind of shit. Uh, apparently the director, Orphan's taking over. He's going to be the, uh, or not taking over, but he's, he's going to be the director. And uh, they got Blake Lively tapped to play the girl who's on the buoy or whatever. Uh, what, what we've watched, it wasn't there like a great movie, but she did pretty good in it. The movie sucked. What was uh, Age of Adeline, that's what it was. And it was a shit film, but uh, she did really good. I liked, I liked her. So, I don't know. I'm curious to see how that, how that plays out. Uh, and, of course, the biggest... Fucking news story last week seemed to be, uh, which we all knew is going to happen, but now that they're moving forward, it became news again. Uh, CW has moved forward with their Friday Thirteenth series. <sighs> it's fucking CW, like, and I now this is one of the things where I'm running my mouth about something that I don't watch. It's just I know the first, like the first batch of CW shows were all just like teeny bopper WB bullshit. Like it just looked really, it looks bad. It, it does. Uh, I'm told that, like, this new batch of shows, fucking, um, like, Arrow, and I don't know what else is on the, sh on the network. I, I hear they got a little bit of a darker edge, and they're, and they're quality shows, but guess what? Or Supernatural's also on the CW, and I hear, you know, really good things about Supernatural. I don't know, though. It's a, it's a fucking, it's a Jason Voorhees slasher, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, you, I... <sighs> Like, I, I don't really want on network television anyway, but if it's going to be on network television, anything but CW, like, I would much rather see this go to, like, CBS, NBC, Fox. Uh, it just seems like CW is, the, I mean, in my opinion, the bottom rung. And for this, you know, for this huge fucking, you know, horror franchise to get their own TV series to go straight to CW, I don't know. Not, not, I'm feeling a little bit... I just remember, it was a while, it, it, it's, it's been a while ago. It may have been during my first run, before the big year-and-a-half hiatus I took, uh, they were talking about doing the Battle Royal TV show for CW, and I was like, fuck you, you ain't doing that. And they never did. And I was like, well, there's a reason you couldn't do it, because fucking CW. But, uh, yeah, so, but there you go, Friday 13th. I, I heard one rumor about the series will be, uh, and it's just a rumor, or a theory, I don't know, uh, but I read it on a, I think it's Blade Disgusting, where they said that uh, one that, like, they're speculating that like, maybe it's going to be, uh, like, a, uh, Jason returns to Camp Crystal Lake, but then there's also, it's going to focus more about the community of uh, Camp Crystal Lake, not just the actual camp or whatever the case may be. Or not Camp Crystal Lake, but Crystal Lake. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it'd be kind of cool, actually. I'd be down for that. But when you focus on the community, I guess you got to take away from Jason, but really, I think it'd be all right. I, I think you'd be okay with that. As long as you give a good, colorful cast and intriguing whatever, you know, you got to have a good story going on, but at the same time, I'll be okay. I, I just hate CW. I really do. Um, I guess the worst would be like Lifetime. Like Lifetime had it, but CW ain't much better. Uh, Eli Roth, he's taking uh, the Green Inferno on a fan appreciation tour. 
uh, since the fans were rallying behind this movie and they finally, you know, they were heard and the movie is now, you know, they, you know, Bloomhouse brought it out and everything. Uh, so before it hits, you know, theaters, they're taking it on the uh, a fan appreciation tour and they're gonna be hitting uh, multiple cities. That uh, in fact, I think it's bloody disgusting. Or maybe this little shock tea drop. It don't matter. I'm sure if you look it up, you'll find it. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're 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 hitting towns. In fact, it, it hits in uh, Chicago. That's the closest one to me, but that's still really far away. So I um, might we'll have to miss it. But apparently, he's gonna he's gonna be traveling with it, and then he's gonna be doing Q and A. They're gonna be having like I mean, they're making like an event out. Like it's not just gonna be like a screening. It's actually like a big you know Green Inferno event, and I, that's pretty cool right there. I definitely dig that. So uh, so. It, it, We've already heard that she was going to be a part of it, but apparently it wasn't official. Well, it's official now. Uh, Winona Ryder is uh, on board for Beetlejuice 2. And, uh, yeah, I'm good. I like uh, Winona Ryder. I think, I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah, I jumped. I was on the bandwagon when everybody was bashing her for shoplifting because, fuck her, she's rich and she's shoplifting, so, you know. Uh, but I was always a fan of her work. Like, I've always been a big uh, Winona Ryder fan, and I always felt bad Cause it was like it, it, it that happened around the same time Mr. Deeds came out, and I just remember thinking like, "Wow, I feel so bad because a Mr. Deeds was a shitty fucking movie, and then b she got busted for shoplifting, so her career just like tanked right there, like right there on the fucking spot, and and she had to really really recover. Uh, I mean, she's popped up here and there. I think she's in uh, Star Trek, but I don't. Yeah, she was uh someone's mother in Star Trek. Who else I saw it, but uh. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I hope she's kind of making a, a better comeback. Cause not that I'm, you know, agreeing with what she did, but at the same time, I'm like, she's a good actress. We'll forgive her. We'll forgive her this one time, as long as she's not shoplifting anymore. I'm sure she isn't. Uh, and then this movie, I'm really excited about, uh, The Devil in the White City, uh, which is going to be a uh, biopic about the America's first serial killer, H. H. Holmes, and uh, it's going to be a, a team of uh, Martin Scorsese. And Leonardo DiCaprio. You put those two guys together, you always get magic. You just get, you get magic, flat out. Uh, DiCaprio is going to be taking on the role of H.H. H. Holmes. And then, of course, Scorsese, who's fucking master behind the camera. Boom. Uh, really pumped for this, not going to lie. This is definitely one of those I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I wrote this down, and I don't remember if there was anything new to it or not. I wrote down Predator sequel, which I'm, we've covered that numerous times now, and I'm sure all it was was like, for sure this time we got a Predator sequel coming out, but I'm going to go ahead and skip that because I don't think there was anything new other than the fact that they aren't making a Predator, a Predator sequel, but we fucking know that. I'm sure it was something. I'm sorry. This is how this is how unprofessional uh, and unreliable the Phantom is at providing news. Uh, David Lynch is uh, tapped to direct all the uh, episodes for the Twin Peaks Season 3. And that's awesome because uh, I love the first, the, 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 you know, the series Twin Peaks. I really do. Uh, I, I will say the first season is definitely better than the second season. Uh, second season was very, is weak sauce, but then it was coming back at the end and then they fucking prematurely uh, cut it off. Uh, now, I'm not just saying this because I'm swinging on his nuts, but it was so fucking true that any episode that he directed was awesome. It really was. And I hate to sound like, you know, you're just saying that, and I'm just saying that because, you know, it's David Lynch. But it was, like, every fucking episode that that guy touched was great. Like, I just remember when I was watching it, and they had the opening credits, you just look for it, who's directing it, who's directing it. Yes, he's directing it! And then you just knew you was in for an awesome episode, and you was. Like, you were never disappointed when David Lynch directed it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's huge news right there. So glad he's, you know, hitting that back, so. Uh, not really horror news, but, uh, fuck it. Because I think, like most horror fans, we are all fans of Quentin Tarantino. And uh, Hateful Eight trailer just dropped this past week. Oh my god, my dick's hard right now. Like seriously, I got a fucking erection. It's just throbbing. I'm about to shoot in my pants. Uh, pumped. Fucking pumped. And uh, it's funny, uh, you know, my buddy uh, Simon Terrell, he always, you know, he says that, you know, Tarantino's the only person, only director that can get him to watch a western, a war film, uh, you know, a love letter to black exploitation. Like he just doesn't watch those kind of movies. And yet, when Tarantino's name attached to it, he's there. Like, he'll fucking, you know. And uh, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I'm doing wrong. I do like westerns and war movies and shit. I have a few. I got a handful of each over there. Uh, but, yeah, no Tarantino. Like, I'm there no matter what. Like, I could be, he can just start doing romantic comedies. He's like, fuck it. I'm just going to start doing romantic comedies. And I'm like, let's do it. I'm, I'm here. Let's watch it. Uh, Hateful Eight looks fucking awesome. Uh, and then I, I, it's kind of funny because I was like, uh, like, it was literally like the next day. Like, someone already jumped on this, 
they did a, a trailer mashup where they basically did a, it was the Hateful Eight visuals, but then the, the audio was from The Thing, which is also another Kurt Russell movie. And it, it, it fit because, you know, it was like in the Hateful Eight, I don't know if you've seen the trailer yet or not, but it takes place during the winter time and they're all kind of like isolated inside this, you know, one saloon or whatever. It was, it was fucking hilarious, but if you get a chance, I mean, it's on YouTube, so I'm sure you can check it out, but... And finally, the uh, director of Oculus, which I have not yet watched. I know it did well at the box office. Critically, it sucked, I hear, and it just looked like a generic ghost movie to me. But uh, that director is going to be doing Ouija 2. Ouija 2. Ouija, I don't give a fuck. We, I, I'm, I'm calling it Ouija. I don't give a fuck. I'm American. I'll say Ouija. Uh, but he's going to be doing Ouija 2. And uh, I liked the first Ouija movie. I really did. Uh, people shit on it, like hardcore, like literally spreading their cheeks and just dropping fecal matter all over this movie. I thought it was a good movie. Uh, was it scary? No. It was not scary in the slightest. Uh, it didn't really have much of a creep factor. I thought the story was good. It felt like, um, it felt like one of those movies, like if, I don't know, if I had kids and I was trying to like break them into horror or even my cousins... Because a lot of the corn children, they don't, they're don't horror posers. Like, they act like they like horror. They don't like horror. Uh, that's a movie you would use to break, you know, somebody who's never watched horror. You, know, you can, that's just, because it was just, it wasn't scary, but it was still a decent ghost story. You know what I mean? And everybody knows the Ouija board. Like, it's just a popular thing. Uh, do I think it needs a sequel? No. I really don't think it needs a sequel. Uh, however, the first one did well. I mean, it made money, so they're going to do a part two. And I'm sure, I, I really think, I hope it doesn't. I mean, I always hope for the best when it comes to horror films. Like I, Even if it looks stupid, I'm like, I hope you do well. I hope you make your millions or whatever. Uh, so I hope it does good, but I, I have a feeling it's just going to be... Because uh, what else can you really do with it, you know? We established, I think we need to establish the first one, but I guess not. Uh, and, but we get the Oculus, the visionary director of Oculus behind it, so that's unfair. I've never seen Oculus. I mean, it may be awesome. It may be the best fucking ghost movie there is. A mirror. Just shatter the fucking mirror. Is, is it that hard? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the mirror and make a documentary about the mirror when you know at the very beginning you should just break the fucking mirror, but you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, so there you go. All right, guys, that's that's the news this week. Uh, you know, got any comments about it, Drop that shit down below. Uh, you want to talk about it, hit me up on Facebook. I'll be glad to chat about any of these news stories with you. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got.